Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at an uh, interesting use of the orthogonality conditions of Bessel functions. So, uh, given the formula for the, for, uh, the three halves order uh, Bessel function, use equation 19-10 to evaluate the following integral. A is root of the equation, uh, tan x equals x. So, um, we're given this here that uh, that the uh, three halves order Bessel function has this formula here. Um, you can check that using formulas we have in the book. Um, and we are also given 19-10, uh, or 19.10, um, which this is the actual uh, orthogonality conditions for um, Bessel functions. Um, but I'm going to rewrite it in a way that will serve our purposes a little better. So. Uh, from 1, or from 0 to 1, j p of a x, or I guess we'll put the square there, uh, d x is equal to 1 half j p prime squared of a. If a is a zero of jp. Okay, so this is what we're actually going to be using in our problem. Um, you can check with yourself just to be sure that this is the same thing. I'm leaving out these two things because we're not going to use them. Uh, okay, uh, and then we're supposed to find this here. Um, but you can see that this has some similarities to this, uh, this special Bessel function here. Um, so that's, I mean, that makes sense because they also gave us this, uh, and we're supposed to find this, so we must use one for the other somehow. Um, so, uh, they also give us this. So what I'm going to start off with, uh, is we're going to go from zero, we're going to take the integral from zero to one of x times j to the or the three halves order uh, squared of a x dx. And so we already know what this is equal to, uh, which I guess I can just write it down here. Um, one half derivative of Bessel function of the three halves order squared of a. Um, provided that a is a zero of jp, which I guess is uh, really that's the first thing that we should uh, figure out here. Um, they give us this important thing here: a is a root of the equation tan x equals x. So that's just another way of saying that a equals tan of a. I guess this is technically alpha. But yeah, we'll okay. We'll refer to those as alpha from now on. Okay, so um, alpha equals tan alpha. So, uh, with that being said, what happens if we plug this into this formula there? Um, so th we're kind of moving to the next step here. Uh, we'll get back to this line though. Uh, so what is um, the Bessel? You know what is this here? We'll just substitute everything in. 2 over pi alpha uh, sine alpha over alpha minus cosine of alpha. But remember, alpha is equal to tangent of alpha. So if we put tangent of alpha on the bottom of that there, um, what do we get? Uh, what we get is, um, remember that tan is sine over cosine. And so what you get is sine alpha over tan alpha is equal to sine uh, alpha cosine alpha over sine alpha equals 
cosine alpha. So we have a cosine alpha minus a cosine alpha. So this whole thing goes to zero. Uh, and since it's multiplied by this, this whole thing is equal to zero. So for any of these alphas that we have, um, when you put that into the Bessel fun or the Bessel function, yeah, um, it is equal to zero. So if zero is as if a if alpha is a zero of JP, then this holds true. So this holds true. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, then we can continue on after since we verified that this is the case. Let's uh, move on to the next part of the problem. Uh, so uh, at this point. We can go ahead and substitute in our formula there. So when we do that, we get 0 to 1, x, don't forget that x, it's important, times uh, do, 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 2 pi, uh, don't forget, this is alpha x, so this is alpha x, uh, times sine alpha x uh, let's put the parentheses in there just to be safe alpha x that's a bad alpha let's try that again alpha x minus cosine of alpha x uh, and this let's see one more parenthesis this is squared dx don't forget the dx either um, so let's see when we have this here uh, this square goes on to each of these things. So this section is squared, and this section is squared. So eh, I suppose I'll just write it all out again. No harm in doing that, at least. Uh, so it, actually, I will do one step here. Uh, since this is going to be squared, right? Um, and this section, you know, the x is not a constant, obviously. But this part is a constant. Uh, so I'm going to bring it out in front, just to save some writing. Uh, do, do, do. And then this is going to be 0 to 1. That's going to be an x. It's going to be a 1 over x. These cancel each other out, so I'm actually just going to erase them. Um, and then we have this here. Sine of alpha x alpha x minus cosine of alpha x. This is squared, and there's a dx here. Uh, now, does this part look familiar? Because that is what they asked us to find originally. So, uh, I'm going to rewrite this one more time, but in the form that they actually ask us to find, they ask us to find what is this equal to. So, uh, let's rewrite this again. Just going to kind of section that off there, because this is not related, especially to that up there, or to I, I guess to this up there, but that's fine. Uh, so remember that we did find out what this was equal to, or no, we found out that this was equal to that, so we can put this on the other side of the equation. Okay, so do do, do sine of alpha x over alpha x minus cosine of alpha x all squared dx is equal to and then we flip this over because we were dividing by it all that kind of stuff you all know how to do that though pi alpha over 4 because there's a 2 up there and there's a 1 half there of the derivative of the 3 halves order Bessel function Evaluated at alpha. That's not a. That's not really a number. We we need to get an actual number for this now, uh, but thankfully, with all the information we have, we can do that. It's just a matter of taking a derivative, and this derivative is a long derivative. So, uh, we are now going to find this derivative. Uh, let's just put in x first. Um, and let's see. So this here, this is two functions of x multiplied by each other, so we have to use the product rule. Uh, so I'm going to take the derivative of this first section, and, which I'm just going to, 
I'm not going to do it yet. I'm just going to write out first how I'm going to do it. So I'm making absolutely sure that I am not missing anything. Sine x. And remember, we're just doing this for the variable x right now. Um, we can substitute in alpha later. It doesn't make a difference. And then we have to add th this here. And the derivative of this section this time. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, actually, so like I did before with the other pro with the other part of the problem with the integral, I'm just going to bring the uh, constant multiple out in front. Um, and so then this x here is actually a uh, one a one over x, but the square root. So that's going to be equal to a x to the negative one half. So if you take the derivative of that, you bring down the one half, and then you subtract one. So that is negative one half times x to the negative three halves. Uh, negative one half x to the negative three halves power. And then this here remains the same because we do not take the derivative of this part of it. As my calculus teacher says, you don't touch the inside. Well, this isn't the inside, this isn't the chain rule, but it's the same sort of idea. You don't touch this part of it when you do it with the product rule that way. Um, and so now this is going to be plus, uh, we don't touch this, we did bring the uh, constant multiple out. So this is going to be uh, x to the negative one half. And it's going to be the derivative of this. This is a little more difficult. You have to take the derivative of this separately and the derivative of this separately. This is also a product. It looks like a quotient, but uh, I would rather treat it as a product because the product rule is easier than the quotient rule. So um, this we're going to say is equal to sine of x times x to the negative one, because that is what it is. Uh, so when we do this, when we take the derivative of that, um, that we're going to have a derivative of sine times, don't touch this part, and then we are going to take the derivative of this part, um, which is going to be a sign here, don't touch this part, and then this is going to be, uh, that's the negative from the negative one, and this is going to go down to negative two. So with this here, uh, now that we know that, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it um, in a different form, just a little bit so that we can watch it easier. So this is cosine x over x, this is minus, sine of x over x squared. And the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. OK. All of this was finding the derivative of this uh, Bessel function. So we're not evaluating it at x, though. We're evaluating it at a. At a. And we have one extra piece of information about A that is important, which is that up there, that the that alpha, not A, alpha, alpha is equal to tangent alpha. So what changes in here when we put alpha in instead? Well, remember how uh, earlier, what part of the problem was that? Oh, yeah, uh, this part. When we put alpha into just the regular old Bessel function, we found that um, the sine alpha over alpha minus cosine of alpha was equal to zero, which made the whole thing zero in that case. So this here is that same exact term. If we put in alpha, we have sine alpha over alpha minus cosine of alpha, which when we do the all everything exactly the same as we did before, we end up with this whole term being zero. 
since that's multiplied by this term, we don't, the, you know, this term doesn't matter either. It's not infinite. So we multiply it by zero and it's going to be zero. So um, I guess we can put the constant multiple out in front since we don't really have to deal with that. But this whole front thing is a zero. Uh, what about back here? Uh, let's just go ahead and rewrite it out. Um, just so we don't get too many steps in the same place. Uh, but I will go ahead and replace those x's on the bottom with tangents. Uh, this is not x. My do 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 do. That's not what we want to do. We're not doing this for x. We're doing this for alpha, and that's why these things are simplifying. So cosine uh, oh, cosine of alpha and tangent of alpha. Remember, that's why we can simplify because all that. Uh, and then sine of alpha over tangent squared of alpha plus sine of alpha. We can't really do anything with that term. Um, so, uh, what is this term equal to? Well, cosine of alpha, and remember that this is sine over cosine, which when you put it on the bottom equals a cosine over sine. And what is this term equal to? This term is equal to sine times, uh, it would be cosine squared over sine squared. One of these cancels out with this part. So you have a cosine squared alpha over sine alpha. And you have a cosine squared alpha over a sine alpha. And there's a minus sign in between them. So those go away and we don't have to deal with them anymore. So these two go to zero. So what we have now, uh, I'm also going to be putting this back down and into the square root. That's originally where it was. So, uh, and it makes this equation look a little nicer. So we have a two over pi alpha times sine alpha. So all that work really simplifies down um, when you have this little piece of information that alpha is equal to tangent alpha. So uh, we wanted to find this because we wanted it to, to plug it into this formula. Uh, actually, I made a mistake in this formula. This formula, uh, see this here, that needs a square there. Uh, I was going to put a square in there, but I forgot to. Uh, that square is now in there, and this formula is now correct. So, um, we need to square this. Uh, so, or we need to square this, I mean. So, let's go ahead and square it so we can put it into the formula that we have up here. So, Bessel function, three halves order, derivative squared, evaluated at alpha. It's going to be two pi alpha sine squared alpha, which we can do that because we can just square the individual parts. Uh, so now we can plug that in up there, or we can just rewrite it all the way down here because it is easier to see. Sine alpha x over over alpha x minus cosine of alpha x squared dx is equal to uh, 4, or sorry, pi alpha over 4 uh, times 2 alpha, or 2 over pi alpha sine squared alpha, which is equal to one half sine squared alpha. So this really weird uh, 
this really weird integral really does all the way simplify all the way down to one half sine squared alpha. Um, and there, I don't know that there would really be an easy way to evaluate this integral if it wasn't um, if you weren't able to use this uh, the whole Bessel function way. Um, I checked my answer with uh, a numerical integration, and yeah, this is. Yeah, this is kind of crazy how such a weird integral really, really simplifies like all the way down. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I hope to see you in a future video. Thank you.